In New Delhi, the US has broadly agreed to grant India a waiver from Iran sanction which would allow Indian oil companies to continue to import about 1.25 million tons of oil a month till March from Tehran. A source familiar with the matter said, adding that an official announcement could come over the next few days. The US plans to reimpose the oil related sanctions on Iran on November 4th of 2018 to show the Islamic Republic's biggest source of income and pressure it to renegotiate a new nuclear deal. Any country or company trading with Iran without US consent after sanction kick off risk getting out and cut off from the American financial system. The US has insisted all along that it wanted everyone to reduce oil imports from Iran to zero eventually, but was open to countries specific barriers that would allow a limited imports by those pledging significant cut. India and other key importing countries have been engaged for months with the US for a waiver. India and US have broadly agreed on a waiver. India will cut import by a third, which is significant cut, said some sources. India had imported about 22 million tons of crude oil from Iran in 2017 to 18 and planned to raise that to be about 30 million tons in 2018 to 19. But as a condition of waiver, Indian oil firms will reduce their imports significantly, the source said. Indian companies can import 1.25 million tons a month up to March 2019, the same as they have ordered for October and November, the source said. The state oil firms are yet to decide on how this quantum will be split between them. A waiver will come as a big relief to Indian oil companies and MRPL the two largest Iranian oil consumers. How companies will pay for Iranian oil is still being negotiated between India and Iran, adding that it is likely that the two countries will stick to its existing mechanism under which 55% of the payment is made in Euro and 45% in Rupee through UCO Bank under this Rupee is used for import of rice, drugs and other products from India while the balance proceeds in rupee and euro sit idle in the Indian bank waiting for sanctions to go. The Indian side while building its case for waiver assured that the US that this payment mechanism ensure Iran can use oil money from India for any terror related activity, a key American concern said. During the negotiation, India also told the US that it would like to import more American oil if it came on a competitive terms, said Sirs. India and Iran still have to figure out the shipping and the insurance details for smooth trade. Currently, Iran provides its tanker as well as insurance for oil cargoes to India. The US sanctions have driven away Indian and international shippers and insurers from extending their services for Iran and oil imports. So what do you think of US agrees to grant India waiver from Iranian oil sanction? Will this be a good start for India from importing oil from Iran or India is bowing to US on other imports and the exports? India can seize the opportunity to provide an alternative investment hub for American companies which are downgrading their operation in China. US Ambassador Kenny Jester said on Thursday while he pitched for a bilateral FTA as the next big ticket item. Delivering his first policy speech since taking over as the ambassador to India, Jester identified five pillars to take Indo US partnership forward. Stronger defense ties, strategic economic relationship, energy environment, inclusive development and cooperation in the region. US Envy in particularly emphasized on its India's role in the Indo-Pacific region and opportunities in the economic partnership. India needs to take a strategic view of the economic relationship so as a roadmap for FTA could be laid. On pointing out America's first and making India are not incompatible, Jester said rather than investing in each other's market will be mutually beneficial. It will increase economic interactions and volume of trade, lead to the collaboration on emerging technologies and create jobs in both the countries, he noted. 
but let me go through further and says that this is the time to put a strategic lens in our or on our economic relationship. Just we have done with our defense relationship, he said. The speech was organized by the Canaries India, the India chapter of noted US think tank. Chester informed that a number of US companies have reported increasingly difficulties in conducting businesses in the large market in the region as is China. Accordingly, some companies are downgrading their operations there, while others are looking with great interest at the alternative markets. India can seize the strategic opportunity through trade and investment to become an alternative hub for US business in the Indo-Pacific region. Bilateral trade has increased from approximately 20 billion US dollars in 2001 to 115 billion US dollars in 2016. The US Envoy, however, expressed the concerns about the persistent state deficits, including the one the US has with India. He said the US want to work with India to expeditiously resolve the trade and investment dispute. Referring to the defense ties, Justice said, Perhaps in the next year, we can announce some major agreements like the fighter jets, advanced helicopters, unmanned ground vehicles, and intelligence exchanges. He in fact suggested taking Indo-US military cooperation to entirely to a new level, reciprocally posting liaisons officers at each other's operational or the combat commands. When asked about the Sina us ties, Justin noted we are interested in a constructive relationship. But if they engage in the predatory economic policies and other things, there would be no reactions or will be reactions. So what do you think of US putting India ahead of China and US wants India to take the opportunity to avoid China out of the world of US? India will be investing about $1 trillion to really make our energy and electricity infrastructure world class. And while we do that, we are also changing the energy mix. A large part of our focus today is to encourage renewables, to look at energy conservation. And I'm delighted to share with you that last year was the first year where our capacity increase, install capacity increase in renewables was more than our increase in conventional forms of energy. I remember three years ago, solar power in India was about 12 cents for a unit of energy. We scaled up that program massively. In fact, the growth in the last three years has been 370% in solar energy installed capacity. And today we have the last bidding of solar power at four cents per unit of electricity, down by 60%. And that only encourages us to look at even more bigger and bolder targets. Unless the people aspire for a good quality of life, it's very difficult to really take the fruits of development to the people. And unless you have very strong leadership which is committed to serving those aspirations, one can never really get this kind of transformational results. And I do believe that if the commitments that were made at Perry, particularly around access to technology, around access to low cost, long tenor finance, are fulfilled by the world collectively, I see no challenge. There would be the typical local issues like availability of land. There would be concerns about integrating the grid with this large capacities of renewables. But we can address all of them. We are working to address them. That's a local issue. But certainly we will look for the collective effort of the world. I have on more occasion than one discussed with world leaders that it's time that the world collectively decides that wherever technologies are focused towards a safer planet. We must uh, try and make that open access technology. We must try and make it available to the whole world so that we can encourage clean energy, encourage sustainability while making it more affordable. If we believe in it and we work towards it collectively, all of us can make a difference. We are, we are creating a platform which will not entail any direct action or financing, but will become a catalyst to bring the latest of technologies, to bring finance, to bring new ideas, ways of implementation, and bring all the solar rich countries around the world, which are between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. About 121 countries we are trying to bring together on the 
International Solar Alliance platform to help and assist each other and work together as partners to make this dream of sustainability and poverty elevation eradication come true. Please check comments below and if you like this video please give a thumbs up and follow us on social networks and subscribe to our channel and thanks for watching this is WZ Daily think big think different bye